standardized testing. So this is a fun, this is an interesting point to talk about the SATs versus the ECTs. Um, so basically the best thing I could say about that is and whether or not which test you prefer is literally just early on in your high school career, test both of them, do a practice test on both the SAT and ACT and figure out which one you got either a higher score on or did better or just like the test more. Because that's pretty much the test that you should pretty much start focusing on because it's better to have one really good score on one of those tests than two mediocre in both of them. So, and here's the thing, for me personally, the, SAT, the test I was better at was the SATs, but I had a friend who didn't score that good on the SATs, but scored really well on the ACTs. Like it's really up to your preference. The ACT is basically just a test that has less of a time limit. So the time limit is shorter and there's a science section for the ACT and the SATs only has four main topic, well, three main topics with four sections, which is reading, writing, math. And math is split into two parts. So for me, I did SAT and my personal score was a full score, perfect score on eight, on math, which was a, which is an 800 score and then a 730 in reading and writing score, which is the combined reading and writing score. So that is in total of 1530, which is roughly like the one percentile, um, one percentile school, which essentially means it's a good score. That's not, but that's not the necessarily the point of what I'm trying to get here. The point is for me personally, at least through what I did, so I could share some tips with you guys so that you guys can do the same thing I did. Um, for math, uh, not only is timing everything, making sure that you actually have the time to make it to all these questions, because I know that a lot of the things said with the SAT is that guessing doesn't hurt you. But the thing is, if you have to guess on the SAT, then you will not perfect score. Like it's just not going to happen. Like you need to go into that test basically knowing that the answer to every question, which seems hard at first, but through a lot of studying and practice, I'm sure you guys will be able to get it. Um, and which goes to my second point is that practice increases accuracy. Basically, the more you practice, the more time you put into everyday practicing because you want to keep your skills fresh, you will basically be able to eventually obtain a really high math score or even a perfect score. Um, and that's pretty much the best advice I can give when it comes to math and also just doing as much new questions as possible. Just keep finding new SAT tests and questions to just keep doing them and do them daily. Like, or like, like at least try doing one to two questions daily even because that alone is gonna help keep your mind on the fact that, hey, the SATs are something I have to study for. And an important note I wanna give is, um, I know that with the SAT math, there's three main SAT maths that you have to know, which is geometry, algebra two and algebra one. I, that's at least how it was, those maths were divided in, in my school district. And the thing is, I understand that some of you guys, if you, especially if you guys are freshmen, you do not know all those maths yet, which is fine. You can, which is why I usually recommend that most people start studying for the SATs around like um, freshman or sophomore year, because that's usually when you know all the maths. Um, and it is probably the best time to start and just like start like practicing just in high school. I know some people say start in like even sixth grade or eighth grade, which is fine. But I mean, from my perspective, at least, I feel as if that's not going to help much because the only content you can really study in like middle school for the SATs is the reading and writing section. And also with the fact that colleges aren't taking like they still value the SAT and ACT, but not as much as academia. Your main focus should be on your academics and then this. And with that, I feel as if high school, like freshman, sophomore year, early freshman, sophomore year is the best time to start. <clears throat> now going into um, my tips for reading. See, the thing about the reading test for the SAT is that it is pretty much advertised as, oh, there's many different answers that could seem correct. Like that's just the way the SAT test is designed. It's supposed to trick the brain into thinking, oh, these two answers seem very similar to each other to this one question. It's not, <laughs> there's only one answer. It, it will always be like that. And I know that sounds obvious, but like, trust me, the minute you read a question and there's like multiple answer choices that seem like they're the correct answer, go back and reread the text that it's, the question is from because that means you didn't completely understand it. Um, <clears throat> and that's pretty much my best tip for reading. And also this might not help everyone, excuse me. <coughs> I'm talking too fast. Um, this might not help everyone, but try annotating your um, texts and stuff like that to make sure that you have notes to go back to in case you need to go back to the text so you could find stuff quicker. Um, as for the writing section, I don't really have too much tips for this. You just really have to memorize all the, uh, all the uh, grammar rules. This is like pretty much the only thing you can do. And yeah, it sucks because this is just all memorization at this point. It's like you have to just know the grammar rules to understand what, the, what is wrong with the text that they provide you with. And that's really all you can do. That's like for the writing test, that's really what I did. And I scored decently well on it. And um, 
I did manage in one of my practices to completely get zero wrong on the writing section, even though, yeah, even though that, yeah. And honestly, it's just, just memorize the grammar rules. That's really all I can say for the math, for the writing section. For any writing test, most of the time, it's going to be just memorize the grammar and just understand what's wrong with the way they worded all that stuff and like the grammar and everything like that. So that's really all I can give you guys. I hope that was helpful. But um, what type of English questions should you study? See, <clears throat> the thing about um, English questions is the fact that the best thing you can honestly do is just study as like study through the tests. Like the test, like the practice tests that are available on the internet from College Board is a lot. And also Khan Academy is a huge source. Um, literally just go on Khan Academy, do a practice test on it, let them grade you and figure out what stuff you're specifically bad at. It's okay if you're not the best at English, because essentially it also depends on what your major is going to be that the score that's ways more important. Like for me, my math score ma mattered more to me because I wanted to go into to STEM. But um, regardless, your English score, if like, if you want to make it better, the really the best thing, you, and it, this also depends, like, are you focusing more on writing or uh, reading? For writing, it's literally, you just you just have to memorize the grammar rules, I'm sorry. There's not a better answer than that. For English, honestly, just reading more passages like that are, that are usually shown on the SAT and just doing more reading questions is really the best solution. Just like practice, but also understanding the philosophy, philosophy behind the reading test is really important. Like the idea that, hey, just annotate as much as you can understand that like some of these questions are going to be like hey try to make you think that there's only there's more than one answer that's correct but it's only one all that kind of stuff and um um what sources do you did i use for the sats like websites or textbooks okay quick word of um note i don't really think you need that many textbooks to study for the sats please don't do what i did and buy like 10 of them that was not the smartest idea. But if you really truly want to study through textbooks, because I understand that some people really just like having a book to finish to study from, um, I would say that the Panda, the, the College Panda and Princeton, the Princeton Review are two very good resources to use for um, SAT practice. College Board itself is also a really good resource. Just go on the College Board website and see as many tests, like see like tests of possible like that they provide because the test like the college board is the main source that the SAT is coming from um and <clears throat> for and then for like just having basic practice problems to get Khan Academy Khan Academy will not give you any strategy for the SAT like they just give you practice problems but um Khan Academy is also a really good source especially since if you take the test through Khan Academy just a practice test um, they will actually like tell you which skills you should be working on and which ones are like good four out of four. So, um, <clears throat> so that's pretty much the best recommendation I can give. Khan Academy, and then pretty much um, don't focus too much on textbooks. Like, don't waste your money too much. But if you just really want to study from a textbook, Princeton Review has really good um, thing, a uh, really good in terms of teaching the topics, but also um, giving you strategy. And College Panda is really also good at like just teaching you the topics very well. So, how many times do you, you recommend you take the SAT? <laughs> uh, depends on how tired you get. Um, the thing is, I took the SAT a lot. <laughs> I took it a lot. Um, and because simply put, because, and this is partially due to the support I had for my family too. And I was getting very tired by the time I hit November because almost every month by that point, I was taking an SAT test during my, during my senior year. And I was very tired by that point, but I decided to take the December test too. No, wait, not the December test, um, the November switch that October. I was super tired. I took the test one more time in November because that was pretty much the last one of the year. Um, whatever the last test of the year was that was the final test I took during the year of 2019 and I just took it as much as possible I just like and the thing is you have to just keep going and it also depends on how much money you have to throw at college board in terms of taking tests over and over and over again because depending on where your family stands financially they might not give you um like waivers for the fees for pay paying for the SATs so um I think how much SATs you can take I think you can take as many as you want. Just how much? How much are you willing to pay for the fees for it? Because it is expensive, and if and it also depends on how much like energy you have left. Because um, you have to also remember that you have to make sure 
that your applications are perfect. And if by senior year, like late into December, you're still like studying for the SAT, like that could really like disturb, discourage you. So it really just depends on how much are you willing to still push through and try to chase after a score you want. And how willing are you to pay for the money if you have to pay for the money for each exam? Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it. I mean, for me personally, I was gun ho about getting that 800 or that really high math score. So I just kept trying um, until I finally got it. And that really helped me a lot with my um, college applications. And um, for, so I think it, in terms of recommendation, a lot of people say after the third SAT that you take, that's pretty much the score you get. I'm living proof that's not it at all. I took the test like six times probably. And I jumped from like, I did like a hundred point jump by the time I got like my 800 score. And just quick thing I wanted to add about the SATs. Don't be discouraged because the SAT is very weird when it comes to points and curves. Like there have been tests that I have been in where I did one wrong in the math and I was all automatically at a 750 score. Like it's, it's ridiculous. <laughs> like it's, it's like, like, like one or two wrong and I immediately drop so low. Like in, so it, it, it really just depends first off on what curve you are on. And if you want to do perfect scores, the curve doesn't matter because you have to get everything right. But um, basically just be wary of the fact that the SAT, depending on each test and how many people take that test and like the standard deviation of which questions were wrong and which questions were more right, that depends on, that pretty much affects how much points you actually drop per question. So it's it's very weird. And you, it, it, you'll you find that on websites, like right after people take tests, people run to try and predict the curves. It's really funny, but also stressful. But um, going back to, the, so like, just a quick warning about SATs, I wanted to throw that out there. Um, how many times do you recommend taking the SAT? Up to you, really. I took it as many times as I needed to, to get the score I wanted. So I would just say that, honestly. Uh, when should you start preparing for, I'm assuming the SAT or ACT? Like I said, probably around um, freshman year, sophomore year. And for you just building your resume in junior, in general, when should you start? I would say, honestly, now. <laughs> freshman year is like the best time to start. Like I built a lot of my resume and like colleges love seeing you starting from freshman year all the way to senior year working on something. Like that shows commitment. So I would literally say now in terms of starting your resume and for SAT, um, either freshman year or sophomore year is probably the best time to start. It depends on how much math you know, but like reading and writing, you could study SAT for that at any time. Because by the time like middle school hits, you basically have all the skills at your disposal to be able to do the rating writing test. So it really just depends. But I would say freshman year, sophomore year is the best time to start. <clears throat> um, did you take any subject tests? No. <laughs> um, the main, oh wait, yes. I took one just as testing. I just remembered. It's, I only took one just as to test to see if I like them or not. Um, I didn't. <laughs> I didn't do that good on them. I mean, like, it wasn't bad or anything, but it wasn't the best either, and I only took it once. So the thing about SAT subject tests is that they are very nice to show you your knowledge on one specific type of topic. I, this was the one thing in my high school journey that I just chose to skip because I was focusing on so much stuff that I just chose to skip subject tests. I don't recommend you actually skipping the subject test, especially if you take APs like AP Chemistry or AP Biology. Try taking the subject test for them because that can help show that you know your knowledge very well. I, it, it is true that the SAT and tests and stuff like that, colleges are starting to ignore them, but that still doesn't change the fact that they're in, incredibly good resume boosters regardless. Subject tests are, can be very useful in terms of not only showing your knowledge in something, but also bragging about, hey, look, I am like far reaching in terms of not only just doing the SAT, but the SAT subject test as well. So I didn't do any really monumental SAT subject tests. I only did one just to test the waters and then decided to just completely focus on the SATs. Um, but I wouldn't recommend that. If you have the time, definitely go for SAT subject tests. And especially if you wanna to apply to Ivy Leagues and you have the means to do so, they love subject tests. So like definitely do that as well. Even though they kind of are a little like, eh, we don't try, like, we don't want to do the test too much. The Ivy Leagues are a little, eh. like, um, they still like seeing them. MIT, for example, the, the biggest example of all, um, they will not let you even apply without doing subject tests. So just be wary of that. Reading books, how important is it? And what type of books should you read? The thing about the SAT, I'm assuming this is for the SAT. Um, they ask from four different sections of like types of like liter types of like text um, things to read, and that's literature, fiction, 
um, social social science type work. So um, something akin to like research about like the current times and stuff like that. Actual science, which is like research, like full on out um, like science related stuff. And then um, historical texts. So really anything from that four. And to be completely honest with you, in terms of reading books, it is always important because you want to keep that skill as fresh as humanly possible. It shouldn't be like, oh my God, if I don't read, I'm going to fail. That kind of thing, no. But it is important to like keep up that like, hey, like read so that like that skill that you need in terms of reading, not only fast, but like accurately in terms of understanding what you're reading is still there for the SAT. It's not something specifically that I had to worry about too much because most like call it like most high school curriculums force you to continue reading anyway. Um, what books you should read honestly anything that interests you even doesn't have to be books like random articles like keep up with the news that even alone is going to help like hone in your skills for um making sure that you could read well and different types of things as well just don't like it's like literature social sciences historical texts and um <coughs> and my brain stopped sciences and then normal science topics um what is what do i think is the future of sat <laughs> I'll be honest, I think eventually it's going to fade into obscurity. It's going to take a while to get to that point, but I think it will fade to obscurity eventually because already colleges are planning, especially like Ivy's and top tier colleges are planning to completely take it out of the application. Like right now it's, oh, it's a nice good supplement kind of thing. And that's only because of COVID. But I think within a couple of years, it's either going to get completely changed into a different type of test or it's going to kind of get thrown out of the thrown into the trash bin because at this point it's becoming clear that colleges are going to stop using it as like a big like thing that will like pretty much like decide it and what will replace it uh what will replace the sat um i'm being completely honest when i say um i don't know yet it might be a new test it might be a new brand new test that's designed it might literally even be that every college wants you to do their own little mini test to apply like the bigger level colleges like they might even do that like MIT might just be like okay you want to apply take our test and let's see how well you score because that's we could depend on our own stuff to do it. I do feel as if that might be a step that some people take but I think most normal colleges are like not normal but like like not Ivy leagues Ivy leagues basically they're probably just going to start depending entirely on your GPA because quite honestly that's the main indicator of how good of a student you actually are and your extracurriculars are going to tell whether or not your skill in terms of other stuff and stuff like that it's going to talk for you uh what if juniors or seniors think that they are late too late to prepare um and if freshmen think that they have too much time so nothing pushes them forward the thing about that is honestly for freshmen just at least study like 10 minutes a day every day it's like not really a huge commitment in the beginning like just do something so that it uh, is coming your way and for juniors and seniors i started in roughly junior year you can do it and if you senior year yes that's a little late at that point senior year is a bit tricky but it's still worth trying to get a score that you want also remember that like the sat score is not the end all be all the most important thing is your gpa um for juniors and seniors you can't give up until it's too late i'm sorry because like that sat score is entirely dependent on like is not is like somewhat dependent i mean not entirely sorry misspoke um on how much money you were going to get for college so like it's not worth giving up until it quite literally is too late um and even then, remember, the, the GPA is the most important thing. Um, and for freshmen, procrastinator 101, I know it perfectly, trust me. Um, I procrastinate a lot, but honestly, my great, biggest tip I can give you is seriously just, um, just practice at least a little bit every day. That's going to help you so much in terms of keeping your skills fresh and keeping it like so that you can practice constantly.